I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I was six years old in the summer of 1969, and I can very clearly remember the build-up to Apollo 11. I watched the launch uh, from my school, and then the landing happened, of course, on July 20th, and I was in the living room of my home and watching in wonder as I uh, watched Neil Armstrong take those first steps on the moon. Oh, that looks beautiful from here, Neil. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like the uh, United States. It's, uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. We were at home. Everybody was just sort of coming and going and, and being there to support my mother, who must have been terrified, although she never showed it to me. On July 20th, 1969, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin touched down on the moon, becoming the first humans to set foot on another planetary body. An estimated 650 million people around the world watched the live broadcast of Armstrong and then Aldrin planting their boot prints on the lunar surface. I don't think we'll ever match the excitement or the achievement of landing on the moon for that very first time. It was a moment that changed the world. And 50 years later, that one small step continues to inspire people as we stand on the cusp of the next giant leap in human spaceflight. The moon landing was the climax to a fierce competition between the U.S. and the former Soviet Union. Known as the Space Race, it was a fight for technological supremacy, military might, and dominance in space. The Soviets made early strides, launching the first satellite into space in 1957, and the first human four years later. Then, in 1962, hoping to exert America's authority once and for all, President John F. Kennedy issued his famous challenge, that the U.S. would land astronauts on the moon by the end of the decade. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Ultimately, it was about the Cold War. That particular rivalry where the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a struggle for the control of the world, that's really what it was. Apollo was a part of that battlefield. It was about impressing the rest of the world, that Americans had the strength, the technological, the economic, the political strength to carry this off. But public support for the nascent space program was lukewarm at best, particularly after the deadly Apollo 1 fire that killed astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. If you look at public opinion polling at the time, there were a whole lot of people who thought we were misspending our money. And that has sort of been lost in, in, the, in the times of history. Only at the time that the moon landing actually took place did more than 50% of the public think that it was a good idea to spend the kind of dollars we were spending to go to the moon. One reason for the Apollo program's $20 billion price tag, equivalent to more than $116 billion in today's dollars, was because NASA was attempting something that had never been done before. The stakes were high. So were the risks. I think they felt the odds were about 50-50 that everything would be pulled off and accomplished in the way it was supposed to. It was a big risk, not only getting to the moon, but then landing on the moon and then launching off of the moon to come back. When you talk to the people involved and the way they were feeling at the time was they, they weren't so sure they were going to be able to pull this off. Apollo 11 trained for a certain mission for the first landing, but so did Apollo's 12 and 13. But those crews all trained for the same mission because they felt like Apollo 11 was attempt one. And if it didn't work, then attempt two was going to try. And if that didn't work, they would go with attempt three. Tomorrow's mission uh, in particular, uh, I attempt uh, this evening to uh, make this as much like uh, other evenings as, uh, as humanly possible. At the same time, uh, I can't help but uh, feel a sense of humility uh, uh, with the challenges that uh, will be placed in our hands tomorrow. We, the crew of Apollo 11, uh, we think country has provided us with 
the finest equipment, finest training, the finest preparation that anyone can receive. Dad talked to us uh, before he left for the Cape, and he told us there was risk, but he also told us that he had confidence in the mission and the spacecrafts, and they were ready. And I re remember walking away from that, that meeting in the dining room and, and feeling like everything was going to be fine. Four days after launching from Cape Canaveral, Florida, Apollo 11 was ready to touch down on the moon. Armstrong and Aldrin climbed into the lunar module to descend to the surface, leaving behind Mike Collins in the command module, where he would stay, orbiting about 70 miles above his crew members. Dad never expressed any real concern about the actual EVA, the moonwalk. He was more concerned about getting down to the surface safely and then being able to take off again and, and rendezvous with Mike, who was circling the moon at that time. The landing was perhaps a little more dramatic than the astronauts would have liked. As Armstrong and Aldrin descended to the moon, two alarms were tripped on the lunar module's guidance computer with about 30,000 feet to go. Alarm. 1201. Roger, 1201 alarm. We're go, same time, we're go. Margaret Hamilton remembers that moment well. As a software engineer and NASA contractor at MIT, Hamilton, one of very few female computer programmers at the time, helped develop Apollo 11's guidance and navigation systems, which enabled the astronauts to reach the moon. I wasn't really nervous until the priority alarm displays came out and they came up with what we called emergency alarms, alarms that were never supposed to happen during a mission. It's why now? Why now, just before the landing, does this have to happen? I guess if I would describe it, I would say it was about as nervous as one could get. As it turned out, non-critical data had flooded the spacecraft's computers and overloaded the system, triggering the alarms. In reality, the spacecraft and its computers were performing as expected. After Hamilton and her team realized that, Mission Control gave the astronauts a go for landing. Despite overshooting the landing site by several miles, Armstrong skillfully maneuvered around giant boulders and craters, and with only 30 seconds of fuel left, he set the lunar module down on a relatively flat expanse that would come to be known as Tranquility Base. 30 seconds. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twin. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Apollo 11 was on the moon. Mike Collins has described to me that it was a series of steps that had to happen, starting with the launch and ending with those steps on the moon, and all these separate miracles had to happen for them to be successful, and that's what happened. It's conceivable that had they not found that landing site when they did, they would have ultimately had to abort the mission and come back home. What was born out of a fierce competition between two countries became an accomplishment that united people from all over and the world celebrated together. It wasn't just a, an, a, an accomplishment for the U.S. The moonwalkers have told me when they went to other countries, it wasn't you did it, you know, the U.S. did it, it was we did it. Everyone had the sense that it was the world participating, and I don't think we knew that was going to happen. Airmen from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon, July 1969, B.D. Now, 50 years later, NASA is eyeing the moon once again. The space agency wants to send astronauts back by 2024. That mission, part of NASA's Artemis program, will give us the first female moonwalker and could be the start of more long-term stays on the lunar surface. We have learned many things because of what the astronauts achieved in the 1960s and 70s. And it has transformed our understanding of, of the moon and its formation. And there are a whole lot of questions that have been sparked by that understanding that we want to go back and find out more about. If you look at exploration, it, it takes a while between the first time getting somewhere for exploration's sake and then going back and settling there. And I think we're at that point where it's time to go back and settle. 
If our objective is deep space exploration, to become a multi-planetary species, and if that's not what it, this is about, you kind of have to ask the question, what's the point of humans in space at all? If we want to go to Mars, for instance, the best way to learn how to do that is to go to the moon and survive there for some period of time. Wherever the destination, it's anyone's guess what the next 50 years of human spaceflight and exploration will bring. When I think about the legacy of Apollo, I really think about the inspiration that it provided to the young people of that generation. And I want, I want that same thing to happen now going forward. Uh, I think we need to both remember where we've been and what we've accomplished, but we also need to recognize that we're on the cusp of, of another sort of great surge of, of innovation. I think one thing that, uh, that I've learned uh, is that it's hard to predict the future. It's hard to predict, you know, uh, what is going to resonate with people. One of the things about exploration is that you find new things. You find things that you didn't expect. And some of those things are going to be amazing and, and incredible, and, and, and they're going to capture the imagination of people. Let's just keep looking, because I think we've shown over and over again that when we do that, um, uh, good things happen. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.